modular space program, or uh, in other words, docking things together. Well, basically, the idea here is that we're going to send some modules up. They're all going to be separate, and the modules will come together to whatever mission that you want. That's the premise of this, anyway. I'm not sure how it's going to work out. I'm going to do a basic one where we're going to do a moon landing, I suppose. That's the easiest bit. I did originally start this as a Moonar station, which will be in a polar orbit, and that that'll bring us some other problems as well, which we have to solve, or at least I have to think out, because I didn't realise it at the beginning. Anyway, let's get into orbit. This is the first module, which is the core of the space station, obviously. And of course, we've got Jebediah in the cockpit. Well, that's because it's a brand new save, and he's the first curve he choose. I have to mention by here that I originally did start this of just doing a Mooner space station, so yeah, you have to forgive that the first two launches are particularly to do with the space station and nothing to do with the modular space program, but we do get into that. That's because I hadn't decided on the modular space program in the beginning. It was going to be uh, building bases on the north and south pole of the man. Particularly though, building a base on the South Pole of the Man, or at least I'm going to land on the South Pole of the Man, because that's one place I have not been. I've been in craters, I've been on smooth flats of the Man, I haven't been on the South Pole. And some deep craters on the South, I've noticed, and perhaps we could build a base in one of them in the future. I will see. But anyway, by here we have the customary descending, or ascending away from curving. And then, for some reason, skip all the way to the orbit around the man. That's because I forgot to record it. How dare you, Mark? So you then have to watch the probe crash into the man. And this brings up a quick question. Apparently, some of the uh, Apollo missions, they had their modules, the transfer rockets, as they're called, crash into the man. But the first early ones went into interstellar, no, interstellar space, in interplanetary space. In other words, they're in orbit around the sun, not in orbit around the moon Earth system. So perhaps one day they'll encounter this our Earth's moon system and then get catapulted off further into space. Or maybe they'll come and impact Earth at some time. So we'll have a look forward to that. Anyway, in our space program, we're not going to be allowing debris to fall into orbit around the Earth curving system or even into interplanetary space. However, one thing we're going to work out is how to get into orbit around the moon and try to get a rendezvous with our space station. If you look at this, our orbit inclination isn't the same as the station, and that's because the station is in a particular inclination in a polar orbit, so it's not like transferring to the man going into an equatorial orbit, which will be much easier to do. So we have to do an inclination change, which is quite costly if you think about it in Delta V. You know, anything about orbital mechanics, and we all do, don't you? Or as I said, that is one of the challenges which I had to work out in this polar orbit of the man station. I did think about at one point, well, if we're going to do a modular space program, why can't we just start another station? But now I thought, well, stick with this. I'll work it out. There must be a way. And there is a way, which I will show to you shortly, but first off, let's get this tank docked. Basically, this module is to refuel anything that comes and docks with the space station, uh, bases, um, landers and whatnot. But before we plan anything, let's dock this. Okay, with anything you're going to dock here, always pack a make job, it makes things a lot easier. <laughs> Because you can pick up the docking computer, make sure a safe distance is overridden, and that any other space problems are out of the way, and just watch and wait for it to dock. Okay, this is the lazy way of docking. I know how to dock, I've done it hundreds of times, but this way I can dock it this while I'm talking to people on my Discord server. Plug, plug, plug. <laughs> okay, I'm not plugging my Discord server, you can join if you want. But now, as promised, how to get your spacecraft in the same polar inclination as your space station. As I just shown by there, you match up the shadows on the moon and Kerbin exactly like that in the map view, and then you launch. But preferably, check your staging first. <laughs> yes, a mishap, which I included in the video to show that I'm not better than anybody else. 
and even master Kerbal notes make have problems as well. Anyway, and then launch up into orbit, and basically you want to have launch and have the shadow at the same space so that you're basically approaching the man at the same time and get into polar orbit. As such, look at that, the inclination difference is so small that it's not going to take so much fuel and we basically can do the inclination change when we're doing our intercept burns. And there we have it. Alright, so what the explanation for this is, we've got extra docking ports so we can dock the extra modules that we are now sending off to the space station. Under this fairing, we have the modular lander with all facilities, parachutes, landing legs, fuel tanks, and places for the Kerbals to stay, obviously. Oh, and the complimentary heat shield, required for return. My real concern of this mission was that the docking ports would give way somehow and would be unstable, and in fact they were at this point. When I was trying to transfer the rocket on the way to the man, it was wobbling about quite a bit. I wish a bit more extra struts on it. Suppose you could put or en enable the auto strut system. But this is what I like about the modular space system is that you can have a mech jeb on each module and then you can have them dock. And the way to do this is have the docking program open on mech jeb, set it to target a docking port, let it auto dock and then change your the spacecraft you control into another spacecraft. Now the thing you can't do is swap back to the space probe that is already auto docking. That way seems to end the docking program and then you have to manually re-enable the automatic docking. Which I found weird. I'm not sure if it's the same on 1.1, 1.3.1, but it was originally on 1.2. Not sure if it was a bug. Or it was a bit of annoyance, especially when you were using the keys to swap programs. The way around this I found was using EVS or Easy Vessel Switcher, which is basically when you've got that mod installed, you hold down Alt, point the mouse at the spacecraft you want to control, click your mouse button, and hey presto, you have changed the spacecraft you're going to control. And I find that a lot easier than using the bracket keys to change your spacecraft. I don't know why it's not uh, stocking the game. Anyway, as you can see, each module has its own RCS tanks, RCS thrusters, mech jet control unit, batteries for making sure that I got power when on the dark side of the sun. And um, the dark side of the sun, dark side of the moon, there is no dark side on the sun. And also, you have solar panels. Basically, you have everything you need for control, docking ports, plus required. Also, I've put all the docking ports to auto strut the heaviest part. That way, they've got extra strength when they dock together. Because I don't know if any of you guys notice, when you're building a space station, when you're docking things together, they seem to get a lot wobbler. The Kraken seems to be much more engaged in destroying your spacecraft and everything. Where it looks like we've survived so far and here we are coming in for landing now I've made a bit of a mistake by here I thought this was flatter than it actually was I was trying to tip over towards and thrust towards a flatter land landing spot but it appears that I turned the wrong way Yes, it's hard to know your orientation when you're just looking at the spacecraft view rather than that and have pull Anyway, we've landed, and look, we have our new DAS on the moon. <laughs> we got our new DAS on the moon, yo. Yeah, new DAS was here. <laughs> I don't know why, but this Kerbal, I found really hilarious. Anyway, the biggest problem here is how do we get off this moon? If any of you had this problem where you've landed on the moon, or anywhere you've tipped over, you have to get upright to try the thrust. But the best way to make sure that you can is make sure you're on inclination, I suppose. Thrust. Will we do it though? Because what I'm trying to do is go a bit further down, a bit more of an inclination on thrust, and tip upwards. Perhaps if you've got landing legs, use them to tip upwards, but we made it! Awesome stuff. 
Now all we have to do is go and rendezvous with the space station, swap the modules out so we've got the heat shield for return to Kerbin. One thing I neglected to add to this modular space program is a th rocket engine without landing legs. That way we could have left these landing legs on the space station for future missions. This is one good thing when you're testing new concepts like this. I'm not sure if anyone's done this concept before a modular space program where you can build spacecraft to your heart's content. At least doing it this way, you can practice, work things out, say yes, you've forgotten this, you've forgotten that, you can redo it in the future. Unfortunately, a lot of stuff these days are done like that. Even in the past, the NASA space program, uh, pff, Apollo space program was done through testing, testing, testing. Okay, we need this, we need this, we need this. Rendezvous docking. Oh look, we have these docking problems here. We can sort this out doing it this way. Awesome stuff. In other words, games like Kerbal Space Program teach you that you can learn by failure and redoing your stuff and trying again. It's not the end, or is it? We still have to return our Kerbals to Kerbin, and we're still unsure that the heat shield attached to the docking ports will survive. They probably would, but you never know. And you're probably sitting there thinking, well, yes, of course it'll work. We all know it works. We all know science. But if you think about the past, people in the past, when they saw that trains for the first time could go faster than 30 or 40 miles per hour, people thought that you get thrown apart by the stresses on your body going at those speeds. Now, we know that's ridiculous. But in those days, they didn't know anything about how the structure of the body would work. And oh dear, it looks like we have not intercepted the space station, but we've intercepted the space probe that we was sent the modular spacecraft to the space station. Uh, newbie mistakes. I do them all the time. Luckily, the space station is not that far off. It just takes a couple of thrusts towards correction maneuvers and then thrust towards again. This is the basic way of getting your rendezvous, especially if you're quite far distance away. Okay, so now all we have to do... Okay, so now what we have to do is undock the space tank module from this craft, redock that to the space station for future use, and then we need to refuel the landing leg or the thruster module to redock to the spacecraft for return, and we also have to put the heat shield on the bottom of the command pod for safe return. Because if ever you return from a moon or orbit, you will get a fiery descent which will disintegrate any spacecraft that is not protected. So it's always a good idea to do that. Also, oh yes, I almost forgot, we need the parachute module to dock to the spacecraft. Anyway, as we're sorting this spacecraft out for a turn mission, um, I would like to ask you what should we do? Should we continue with this Moonar base? Perhaps I could build some large Moonar bases on the south or the north pole of the Moon. Also, someone have requested for me to play with the Interstellar mod. What do you think about that? Do you think we should go for that or not? Let me know in the comments below if you're interested perhaps with the interstellar mod, or perhaps you want this to be fully stock with perhaps Malkov's well, mech chip. I'll include mech chip here and there. Talking about mech chip, I hear, I notice that every time, look, I've got autopilot docking on. I decide to close the module to the pilot docking module and it stops. Yes, that is odd. Not sure if that's a bug, because if you use the ascent guidance, you set that to get into orbit, and then you close the ascent guidance window, it seems to work fine. That is a nod. I'm not sure if it's a bug. It might not be a bug, it might be uh, intentional, so that you haven't got the autopilot, and you close the autopilot, and you're not fighting it when you want to take manual control. Hmm, interesting. But I decided my manual control anyway. You can see I've got the docking module indicator by here on the nav pole with the red marker. That's all it actually adds is the red marker. Everything else you have to do it the old school way. 
But now our spacecraft is ready to return, how do we return, especially in polar orbit? If you're in your, if you're in an equatorial orbit, it's much easier. What I found is that you can, or the best thing to do, is do your return burn from the front side of the man. In other words, the front of the direction is travelling around the planet. Uh, perhaps a bit to the right if you're looking at the front of the moon, as I'm doing by here. And then you can fiddle with your manoeuvre note until you get a re-entry into Kerbin's atmosphere. In other words, you don't have to get into orbit around Kerbin to return properly. And the best altitude, as you can see by here, is 30 kilometers, or thereabouts. That way you're not going too low, getting too much heat damage on your spacecraft, and you're not getting too high, so then you skip off back into space. Well, you don't actually skip off in space, you do lose a lot of energy. And if you need lower energy return, you can do that, perhaps about 50, kil 50 40 kilometers, you can reduce your orbit distance. And if you wonder what I'm doing by here, I thought that Aplaptis was our return entry distance, so I thought it was 9 kilometers, but it's 9,000 kilometers. I should have been looking at the Periapsis, it's saying 32. I raised that a bit from 30 to 32. Anyway, now we get to see if the heat shield protects us. So let's see if our new Das and Jebediah return safely. <laughs> oh, new Das. I still can't get over it. <laughs> Okay, so things are looking good. We have finished the re-entry hitting. Now all we have to do is make sure that the parachutes survive. Okay, semi-deployment. It hasn't torn the docking parts apart. I've undocked the bottom module. That may be a mistake. It may come and hit us back and hit us. Unless the parachute's open in time, I'm not sure. These were the unknowns, these were the things that had to work out and see if they worked. And I thought I'd bring you guys along for the ride, basically because I didn't have time to test it out and then redo it after. But they survived the fall opening. At least the docking ports, I know the docking ports will survive the opening of the chutes. I'm not sure if we used larger loads if they'd survive, but Nudas and Jebra has survived. I'm Orbator, trust me I'm an engineer. And I will see you in the next video.